Japan's nuclear safety agency says that there were 800 to 1,000 kilograms of hydrogen in two of the reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant shortly after it was hit by the quake and tsunami in March. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency studied the data that Tokyo Electric Power Company provided last month. The agency says about 1,000 kilograms of hydrogen were produced in the number one reactor when the fuel rods became exposed two hours after the quake and the metal fuel containers oxidized an hour later. It says the same happened in the number three reactor some 43 hours after the quake, creating the same amount of hydrogen. As a result, hydrogen explosions blew the tops off the number one and three reactor buildings. At the number four reactor, a new phase has started in work to shore up a pool containing spent nuclear fuel. Engin engineers are concerned that an explosion on March 15th damaged a wall that supports the pool, which holds 1,535 spent fuel rods. So TEPCO is building a new structure to reinforce it. The first of 30 steel pillars that will support the pool arrived at the plant today. The pillars, each 8 meters long, will be placed under the pool, which is on the second floor of the building, housing the nuclear reactor. The work is due to be completed by the end of June. A concrete wall will then be built by the end of July to complete the structure. A circulating cooling system will be installed so that the water in the pool can be cooled to temperature at which they are stable, as their temperature has now risen to 89 degrees Celsius. Ibaraki Prefecture, south of the crippled nuclear plant, has begun monitoring radiation levels at its beaches ahead of this summer's swimming season. Last year, more than 1,750,000 people visited the prefecture's beaches, but the number of visitors this summer is expected to decline following the nuclear disaster. On Tuesday, officials visited a beach in Hitachinaka City. They took samples of seawater from 1 to 1.5 meters deep. They also check radiation levels at five locations on shore. The prefecture is to complete testing at all 17 beaches by mid-June and release the results. It also plans to carry out similar checks later this month and in July. An official says he hopes the test results will show that beaches in the prefectures are safe and many people will visit there this summer. So, uh, it Basically, this was this is an article that was broadcast on. Uh, what's the name of it? What's the name of it? TBS News. So I'm just going to read you a translation of it. 
it's been revealed that TEPCO wants to release about 300 tonnes of water in the re um, of water in the reactor buildings and turbine buildings, according to a news clip at the site of Fukushima No. 2 nuclear power plant. However, fearing the negative effect on marine products, the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries is strongly against the plan, making the negotiations between TEPCO and the Ministry difficult. The reactors at Fukushima No. 2 plant are in cold shutdown, but the tsunami after March 11th earthquake inundated the reactor buildings and turbine buildings. TEPCO planned to release this large amount of water into the ocean and has been negotiating with government officials. The salt water is estimated to be about 300 tonnes. Since it's been sitting in the basements for a long time now, um, the power supply equipment in the basements may degrade. <coughs> TEPCO says it will remove radioactive materials in the water to the level lower than allowed by law before releasing it into the ocean. But the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries is strongly against the plan, fearing the effects on marine products. Japan's industry minister says that power companies will be allowed to resume operating nuclear plants in July after completing regular inspections. His comments come in its public concern about possible summer power shortages due to the disaster at the Fukushima plant. We will ease the concerns of host municipalities by assuring nuclear plants meet safety standards. Then we would like to allow these plants to restart and we hope to secure a stable supply of electricity. The disaster at the Fukushima plant has provoked many prefectures, cities and towns that host nuclear plants to insist that government safety standards be beefed up to ensure safety before operations are resumed. Several plants have completed regular checkups and are waiting for the green light to restart from local governments. Kayeda said the green light will be given in July, the peak month for electricity demand in Japan. The Japanese government will restructure its nuclear organizations to clarify roles and responsibilities if a nuclear disaster occurs. To clarify roles and responsibilities if a nuclear disaster occurs. NHK has obtained a draft of a report. The report says the government will make the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency, the country's nuclear regulator, independent from the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry. It also says that the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, Tokyo Electric Power Company, should improve the design of its nuclear plants to ensure that cooling systems continue to function in the event of a serious accident. The storage pools for the spent nuclear fuel are located too high in the troubled plant and have hampered efforts to cool the reactors. The report also says the government will conduct a study on nuclear safety with the help of the international community to identify ways to strengthen global nuclear safety. The government's Nuclear Disaster Task Force reviews the draft report on Tuesday. It will then be submitted to the International Atomic Energy Agency Ministerial Conference on Nuclear Safety in Vienna that starts June 20th. Japan's labor ministry is investigating why two workers at the damaged nuclear plant were exposed to excessive levels of radiation. A team began on-site inspections on Tuesday. The probe is following up on Tokyo Electric Power Company's announcement that two men in the central control rooms of reactors 3 and 4 were exposed to more than 250 millisieverts of radiation. That is an elevated emergency limit the government set after the nuclear crisis began. The workers weren't wearing protective masks when Reactor 1 was hit by a hydrogen explosion one day after the earthquake and tsunami. 
A team of four inspectors arrived at Fukushima Daiichi on Tuesday afternoon to check working conditions and interview safety control managers. The Labor Ministry plans to instruct TEPCO to improve conditions at the nuclear plant if Tuesday's inspections turn up problems with the management of workers' safety. The Labor Ministry plans to instruct TEPCO to improve conditions at the nuclear plant if Tuesday's inspections turn up problems with the management of workers' safety. Further north in Iwate Prefecture, people who are staying in an evacuation center in the town of Otsuchi have come up with an interesting way to raise money for their community. They're selling lumber from homes that were destroyed by the tsunami. In the beginning, they were collecting the wood and using it to heat bath water. Then they thought of using the salvaged lumber to cover part of the cost of rebuilding their town. So they began selling it online. A 10-kilogram bag goes for a little more than $6.00. Orders poured in from all over Japan. One person even came from Germany to make a direct purchase. My wish is for the fire from the lumber to be a lamp of hope. We've got a couple of stories about people who are trying to cheer up residents living in disaster areas in Japan's northeast. French pastry chef Vincent Dermel reopened his shop on Tuesday in Shiogama City nearly three months after the tsunami struck Miyagi Prefecture. The damage forced Dermel and his Japanese wife to close the shop and they returned to France for a while. The pastry chef is using locally produced salt as to add a subtle flavor to his treats. The salt, called moshio, is made by drying seaweed after immersing it in seawater. I want to continue making sweets. I will never quit. Many people came to buy the cakes right after the shop opened. Dremiel said he is happy to see his customers again.